This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. For just two dollars, you can get ten pieces of your two-layer PCB. Simply upload your Gerbil file and check your designs before ordering the PCB. With live tracking facility of the manufacturing process, you can now get your PCBs with a 48 hours turnaround time for no additional cost. The PCBs are delivered directly from their factory to your doorstep. So go ahead and check out the website at jlcpcb.com. Hey everyone, I am Jesse Api and you are watching Kalakao.10. This week's video is very special to me because I made something that I wanted to do for very long. Of course, there are commercial options available, but this one was something that I wanted to do by myself because it's pretty easy and pretty simple to do. Thanks to Open Builds because I followed their design and it really helped me a lot to accomplish this. Yes, I made a camera slider and it was pretty cheap to do. All you need is a stepper motor, some linear rails and a bit of programming knowledge. With that, I was able to get this up and running. So stay tuned in this video because I'm going to explain how I built this, what all the components that I used, the circuit diagram, the coding, the PCB making process and huge thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video because without them, the PCB wouldn't have been possible. Making projects like this take a lot of time and resources. You can do your bit by supporting me on Patreon for as little as $1 per month. It is a small donation, but for me, it will help me go a long way. Do subscribe to this channel if you want to see more such videos. I'm following the open builds design of the linear actuator to make this whole thing to come together. Laid out all the parts here and these things were ordered online where I got this motor from Juna Bazaar. Starting from the left, we have the motor mounting plate on which the NEMA 17 goes on. This is the pulley which again goes on the NEMA 17 motor. The GT2 belt is around 6mm wide and 2mm pitch. This is the pulley mounting plate. Uh, so the pulley is just a flat bearing with two flanges. This goes on this plate and this plate I milled it myself here in the shop using the small CNC machine. On one side there are these bigger holes on which the eccentric nuts go on and on the other side the Derlin wheel goes on. This box contains everything related to M5. So I have the screws, the nuts, I have shafts, I do have the Derlin wheels and much more in this. The extrusion is actually very strong by themselves because I'm going to put a camera load on top of it. I don't want it to buckle. And that's exactly why I didn't go for the smooth rods because over a long distance the smooth rods starts sagging. This one is pretty strong and moreover I'm going to mount it like this and not like this. With this there could be a chance of it flexing although it is not but the camera is actually going to be mounted on the top like this. So the plate will be on the top which will run on either direction like this. To do that I have to mount the motors on this end and the pulley on that end so that's what we will be doing next. First, we'll be assembling the camera plate and here are all the parts required for it. Using some spanner and the allen key, I was able to tighten all the nuts properly. Now we have the eccentric nuts on one side and we have the washers on the other side. So we have to move it in such a way that the eccentric nuts are all together on one side and the washers on the other side. In this design, by mistake, you can put it like this also in which the eccentric nuts are towards this side and this side, but that is not useful because if there is any play in the wheels, then we can tighten the eccentric nuts to make it snug to the linear rail and that is why it has to be all the eccentric nuts have to be on one side so here I am just pushing it on the first rail and you can see it is moving very smoothly and if I hold the aluminum extrusion and I try to shake the plate there is actually no play at all and that means that I don't have to tighten up the eccentric nuts but in your case if there is some kind of a play or if you see that some wheel is not spinning then please go ahead and tighten the eccentric nuts because we need all the four wheels to actually rotate. So this one is rotating, this one is rotating, so is this one, so is this one. So in my case it's been perfect but in your case 
let's just make sure uh, before we mount the plates we have to uh, put the nut on which the camera can be mounted but right now i don't have that so i'll go ahead and assemble the rest of it and at the end of the video i will add this up i'll just have to basically remove it and then add it but that's okay one point to note is i have loaded the pulley plate on this side so the motor plate also has to go on this face and here's the motor plate and you can see the nuts are already loaded i don't know the name of this but it is halfway nut which means that i can just arrange all these things properly and then slide it from one side and then tighten it up this is quite easy method to do it now that it is gone inside i can go ahead and tighten up the nuts construction is almost to the end the motor is up and the pulley is on the other side now i'm going to run the belt all the way around and fasten it to the center plate with some zip ties Let's look at the electronics part of this project. Here I have done a very simple circuit diagram so that it's easier to explain. There will be two kinds of power supplies that we'll be using. One is a 5 volt one and another one is a 12 volt to 24 volt one. And that is required because we need to power the stepper motors with 12 volts whereas the Arduino Nano will be powered by the 5 volt one. But in real life I used just 12 volt and then I stepped it down to 5 volts. So from the top we have this Arduino Nano over here and we have a 200 ohm potentiometer and this will be used to control the speed of the motion of the camera. So when I reduce the potentiometer obviously the speed reduces and so on. And then there is this joystick over here. This will be used to control the program in the LCD panel. So I'll be using an LCD panel and that's why we have this I2C module over here. The I2C module will be connected directly to the 16 by 2 LED module and whatever menu is displayed over there uh, will be controlled by this joystick so that when the switch is pressed the command is sent and accepted. And then on this side we have the A498 driver which is a stepper motor driver and we will be using this to drive the stepper motor. Obviously we can connect the stepper motor directly to the Arduino Nano and that will also work but that will take too many pins. But here we will be using just two pins the D3 and D4 which is running to the stepper motor driver. There are three pins on this side M1, M2 and M3. I have made sure that I connected the second and the third one and that is connected directly to the 5 volt one which is which means that I've raised it high. That is because I need to change the micro stepping. If you actually search regarding this stepper motor driver you will know what different combinations of these three pins give you what different micro stepping. I think I've used one by eight in this program. And finally we have the end stop here. We have three pins the VCC ground and the output. In our program we'll be using two end stops that's why I've displayed one one image here but I've also put another terminal over here obviously we will be using the same VCC and ground for both the end stops but we will take the output of the first end stop and give it to D5 and the second end stop will go to D6 so take a look at this program and then based on this I was able to design the PCB using the easy EDA program this program is very simple because you can easily drag and drop whatever items you want. So you have a lot of components, symbolic components on the left hand side. Just connect all the pins as I mentioned in the camera slider circuit diagram. So here is the 5 volt, the 12 volt, the joystick pins, the switches and uh, the stepper motor driver, the Arduino Nano. Once I made all the connections, it was easy for me to convert it into a board design. And here's my board design. 
Since I'll be using JLC PCB to print my PCBs, it has made me very easy to use double-sided PCBs. So this one is the top layer that you're seeing and if I hide it and this will be the bottom layer. Once the PCB is ready, it is very simple to generate the Gerber file. By clicking on this icon, it asks me to check if all the components are available. I just want to generate the Gerber files. Once it is ready, you can see the PCB design over here and you can click on order at JLC PCB over here. Once you click that, it will redirect you to the JLC PCB website. You can see the file is being automatically uploaded. Once it is uploaded, it will show you a preview of what the PCB is going to be. So I need just two layers. Uh, the dimension is already set. I need 10 quantities. I want the PCB color to be green. You can change whatever color you want. Uh, the surface finish is this one is fine. One ounce is quite enough and this is perfectly fine. So if you see the total price of my entire uh, package for 10 PCBs of this one is just $2 which is phenomenally good. So I can save to the cart, make the payment and be assured that within 2-3 to three days if you're using FedEx or about a week if you are using normal postal services you will have the PCB ready. Now I just have to wait for a week and I'll have the PCB ready. So after a week I got the package finally from JLC PCB and I couldn't wait my excitement till I started with the camera so I already opened it. But here are the contents inside it. So this was actually vacuum sealed and I just opened it up to see how the PCBs are. Along with that they had given us a pen also. So let's keep that aside and take a closer look at the PCBs. So here are all the PCBs and you can see even the text has come really really nice. This is NEMA 17 motion control and Kalakar, everything has come proper. Here's the Atmega chip, the stepper motor driver and a lot of PCB terminals because I want everything to be very modular. All the PCBs have come rightly in time, so next I'll start soldering it. After soldering, I put everything inside a control box. This was 3D printed. Let's see inside how the PCB looks after soldering. So here's the Audrino Nano, the stepper motor driver and a lot of PCB terminals because as I said, I want to keep it modular. This is a small chip that steps down 12 volt to 5 volt that can be used by this main board. And here I've used a capacitor. It's a 100 microfarad capacitor because when the motor runs, it pulls in a lot of power suddenly and it needs to be smoothened. So the capacitor is used here. On the top, we have the potentiometer, which is 200 ohms, the joystick, power button to switch everything on and off, and the LCD screen. 3D printing this enclosure made everything compact, and I was able to mount it to the linear rails. Here are some more 3D printed parts. These are small adapters that I 3D printed to go on top of a light stand, so that on top of this, I can put the camera slider. Because a DSLR camera is really heavy, I'm going to use two stands, and you can find the design files for all these components, everything that I've used, including the circuit diagram, the Gerbil file, the PCB design, everything in the description, so do check that out. So these go on the stands like this, and I have given a nut here, which I can screw and, and tighten it up. Here you can see I've given a holder also, so it goes on top like this and I can tighten that up. Finally, I have a huge plate here. This is almost 10 mm thick so that it can take the weight and I've made this so that if I'm using a mobile or something, I can just use this as a single plate and it can balance on a single tripod. But if I'm using a DSLR, then I have these two so that it takes the weight. All the components were printed using PLA and then they are plenty strong. So let me go ahead, assemble this up and then I can show you the test video.
The biggest challenge in this project was to get the menu working because I've never worked with LCDs and I have to write a code when you press the drop down or go up. Everything has to be remembered and recorded. That was the tough part. Once I overcame that, then it was piece of cake. All the materials and everything that I've used, all the 3D printing files, the circuit diagram, the code, everything is in the description. So please do check them out. I'm going to bring out a merch store where you can buy a stickers, logo, t-shirt, a lot of different things. So keep looking forward to that. Also follow me on Instagram to see what I'm working on right now. I post almost every day. And if you have any questions about this project, please do ask in the description. I'll make sure that I'll answer each one of you. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. If you liked it, please do click on the like button. Until next time, happy learning.